Okay, we should have just finished having a snowball fight, which means you threw a bunch of topics at me, and we compiled them, we voted on it, and not in the consensus, but at least in the majority, we've selected a research topic to do collectively, collaboratively as a whole class. So now what we need to do before we turn this topic into a research question and really dive into our research, we need to at least do a little preliminary research, preliminary meaning, you know, before, early type research, and decide is there sufficient, is there enough info to use this topic as a research topic. Um, so to do this, first we're going to pick a source and kind of go through it as a whole, how we can grab it and cite it and whatnot. And if you don't know what a citation is, down here, of course, that's running this, but it says a citation. That's kind of blocking it down there, but citation is a formal reference to a published or unpublished source that you can sell and obtain information for while writing your research paper. So basically, it's, you know, how you avoid plagiarism, avoid ripping people off. You know, you have a work cited page at the end where you list where you got your sources. And to stress again, because people always try to do this, a hyperlink, a copy and pasted hyperlink from a website is not a citation, okay? Uh, hyperlinks die, they stop working, uh, they don't have all the information it needs to avoid plagiarism. But to find sources, and I'm going to tell you right now, I, um, I'm not going to have you just Google your topic and find sources off the web. Sometimes you find good sources that way, sometimes you find um, things that are actually like satire, not real sources at all. Um, a couple years ago someone was doing research about, you know, car safety. How do they, you know, the whole crash test dummy thing, how do they know cars are really safe? And they found, you know, a, a parody one and tried to use it as a real source um, where it showed people driving a car and their head exploding. So, you want to make sure you're using real sources and credible sources trusted sources and so how we're going to do that to ensure that is we're going to use InfoHio which some of you may have used before maybe you haven't um, this is InfoHio um, it's a source available to as you can see it's a digital library in the state of Ohio all schools kind of have access to it and uh, we know what our question is right now um, but I don't I just want to show you how to use this then we'll kind of do it live um, you can type whatever your topic is in here and start getting some sources. Um, sometimes this is kind of hard to narrow down, so there's also a couple other ones besides this. iSearch is one that you can use. You can also use this one, Academic Search Primer. You click on there. You get a basic search. Let's say, I know we probably have a topic, but let's say our topic is climate change. And then you click search and then as you see you get all kinds of sources here you even get videos which you can you can use videos as a source no problem uh, you still have to create a citation for them but what's great about these search engines that we're using um, like iSearch uh, anything that's an info out here explore is another one we're going to use they will create a citation for you that you can save and just copy and paste into your works cited page. So let's just go for with the first one here for um, the sake of time. You can see you can read the abstract here or the brief little summary. I'm like, hmm, yeah, that seems like it would work. Let's see, the article discusses that increasingly more frequent heat waves and hotter average temperatures due to climate change are making water so warm that engineers are concerned they won't be able to cool nuclear power plants. Okay, so if that sounds like Yes, that would work for our topic. We can. We have a couple different ways to see the full text. Click this here, and then voila! Of course, this one's not working. Ah. Let's try the HTML. Which PDF is just a file, you know, different type of file, how you save it. Doesn't really matter which one you use. And then here it is. There's the whole article. So we're, we'd read it. If this is something that works, if you look over here where it says tools, this is what makes this so great. Um, you can just save it. That would save it if you're using a Chromebook to your Chromebook. Um, you can add it to your Google Drive. You see I have Google Classroom, which one you use. But before you do any of that, what you can do is you can click 
this button. This is a real good one here. Um, cite. Then right here it gives you different citation formats. And we're going to use MLA because that's kind of our default. So then you, when you have your site, you have this, and you can copy and paste it. And we're doing this here in Google Classroom. Here's the assignment. So you open this. As you know, even though we're doing this collaboratively, we don't want to combine all our stuff yet. So you want to go to File, make a copy of this. Um, then when you make a copy, yours will look like this. And then you just paste it under number one here. The underneath, as the directions say, then you write a two to three sentence summary of the source. And that's basically what we're going to do for the rest of today. Um, now, after you cite it and paste it there, what's well, this great feature? You click Google Drive, and then it will put the article um, into your Google Drive. Okay. So then when you need to refer back to the article, go through it, take notes on it, which we're going to do, get the information you need, it's right there in your Google Drive. Okay. And also you have the citation, so you can probably find it um, if you need to anyways. But as you see, your document has been to your Google Drive account. So just when you go to your Google Drive to find something you typed in Google Docs or Google Slides, the article will be saved there as well. Okay. So that's how you do that for this academic search premiere. We're also, another one I'm going to suggest, you can see you have different kinds of uh, search engines here, health. So if you're doing something about health, you can use that one. We're not going to use it today. If you have a more science-based one, hobbies and crafts, so maybe if you're doing something more about um, something you enjoy doing, like your, uh, I don't know, what's a hobby, a woodworker, I don't know, something about music, maybe you want to do that one. Now this one here, Explora, is always really great, is another one I'm suggesting you use today. Go on here, you type in your topic, you hit search, you get your articles, boom, PDF full text. It will eventually load. You can print it if you really want to annotate it. Um, I believe you can also, I think you can annotate it on here too, um, somehow. You can at least, I know, um, anyways, we're going to worry about the annotating of these articles later. Um, right now, if you download them, you can annotate them. But, before we download again, you can save it to your Google Drive. And of course, the most important one is to click Cite. Then again, you have your various citations. We're going to go down to MLA. Again, if you copy and paste that into your Google Doc, then when the time comes at the end, if you end up using this article, you can just paste that in your works cited page. Again, we're going to look at these articles today. Um, these might not be your sources we use at the end. Right now, we're just determining that there's enough sources out there to make sure that there's enough information to research this topic. So that's what we're doing today using InfoSearch, Explora, and Academic Premier to find. We found one together. Now you're going to find two more sources, and you're going to paste that into that Google Doc. Um, I'm going to pause this, and I'll be around to help you out. See ya.